It is a Monday afternoon, a day generally cast in cold weather around southern region and made thick around Nankunda area in Zumba by the mist hanging over the Mlumbe Ridge on the peak of the mountain. Now and then, this mist blows down the slope, spreading beyond the villages below it. On its way down, the mist sweeps with it small clouds of smoke billowing from a charcoal kiln located in a drift next to a stream. Down in this drift, Flora Ntenje is fanning this smoldering fire in the kiln using a bunch of straps. Time and again, she fights off the smoke, wafting on her face and that of her eight-month-old baby strapped on her bosom. This baby is one of the five children she raises as a single mother. On a small opening that leads into the kiln, she has put a pot in which she is roasting maize. She had been on the site before six in the morning that day. This roasted maize will be her lunch. It is around 2.30 in the afternoon when we find her inside the forest reserve but not too far from the boundary with our village. But this is her third day on this task. It started three days ago with gathering dry logs left by charcoal producers and legal and illegal timber sawyers. She dug a pit on which she laid the logs before putting a heap of soil over them. On the day we found her, the task at hand was to light up the logs in this kiln to make charcoal. It would be another four days before her factory would produce the charcoal that she needed. It is a hot, smoky and glistering work that lasts her the whole week. Out of the kiln, she will produce four bags of charcoal. If she finds buyers right in the reserve, she will sell them a 2,000 kwacha each bag. But if she takes the charcoal to the village, she will sell them a 2,800 kwacha each. That means after one week of hard labor, she will get no more than 11,200 kwacha. Ntenje told Times TV that in an ideal situation, it is not the sort of work she would want to go into because it is hard. In addition, they often run into confrontation with forest patrol officers who take away their equipment. So why does she still do it? Throughout our many visits to the reserve in the past two months, sights of ordinary men and women carrying firewood on their heads or ferrying it on their bicycles down the slope were irregular occurrence. On many occasions, they make a pitiful spectacle of people struggling to survive. We saw old men straining themselves to control their bicycles weighed down by firewood as they trundled down the slope. We also saw men up in the trees fetching firewood for sale down in the city. For too long, these ordinary people have borne the brunt of experts and politicians for the massive deforestation taking place in Malawi. Of course, their contribution to deforestation in the country cannot be ignored. But in many cases, most people of the class of Florentines survive on the cramps of falling from the table of the blue collar and organized criminal enterprises. In our investigation, we have established that corruption is at the heart of deforestation in Malawi. And interestingly, it is government that has done everything it could to help it. For a period of 22 years, government has corrosively weakened the Department of Forestry by starving it of funding. This has resulted in the creation of conditions for the flourishing of corruption leading to the devastation of the forest of the country. For example, between 2003 and 2009, Treasury gave an average of 54.7 million kwacha per annum in other recurrent transactions funding. This was way below its average requirement of 250 million kwacha. In the past five years, Treasury has consistently cut other recurrent transactions budgets 
despite a growing need for the department to fight off the rampant deforestation. In the 2020-2021 financial year, for example, Treasury cut the department ORT budget from 302 million kwacha to 208 million kwacha. This budget was against the minimum requirement of 700 million Demand for forest products has been rising sharply in the country due to factors such as failure for government poverty eradication policies, booming population and lack of alternative energy sources. At this time, when the Department of Forestry needed adequate support to counter the siege on Malawi's forests, government has been depriving it of adequate funding. Worse still, government has also weakened the department by banning it from recruiting new staff in the past 13 years, since 2008. So, while every department has been recruiting, the forestry department has not been. This moratorium was a tragic policy direction because it worsened the forestry staffing problem, which started with the advent of multi-party democracy and apparently through influence of structural adjustment program. Grace Luca was born and lives in the village that shares boundary with the reserve. Even Aha knows how the stuffing problem started. Uh, Kuchoka ntawi mene hii uhandrova wa ukulo wa kwa amuru sinu kume kuna pangisa uti zintu, zisinti. Chifuwa kusintu kume kuna sinti sa zintu mkone na kutuwa ni boma la Hastings kwa aforest anali nda nchidu wa ambili. Ya, azabu eda amuru zi azabu angeza au, muna pezika kuna uti antu wa ambili nchidu mforest anajo sedwa. Kuchoka sedwa kwa antu wa mina ajao nchidu mforest ndu kume kuna pangisa kuna uti sopano karango iso kone kere na kasi mda jo sedwa nchidu po ganzi wadi ndirindiana. According to officials, in mid-1990s, Zomba Mountain Forest Reserve would have as much as 1,000 workers at peak times. Today, there are only 40 workers. And the collapse is clear in the buildings associated with the reserve. Many of the houses that used to be occupied by staff then are vacant. Some of them are in a dilapidated state. In addition, for its 5,000 hectares, the reserve would require a minimum of 15 scouts. Today, there are only four forest patrol guards. They are the frontline workers whose daily job is to comb every acre of the forest to protect it. Forest management is intensive work. Among its activities include attending tree nurseries, planting, construction fire bricks, pruning, putting out fires, and conducing patrols to flush out invaders. If the department was getting enough funding, well, it would have possibly been plugging these staff shortages by hiring as many temporary workers as possible for particular activities. But every year, the department has been receiving less than half its budget requirements. Spokesperson for Treasury, Williams Banda, did not sound reassuring either when Times TV contacted him for these funding moves to the department. He said there will never be enough money for every sector as government has huge development needs or its resources are limited. And so, frustration is taking its toll. Underpaid, overworked, and motivated, and appreciated, the scouts have been creating their own corruption schemes that have accelerated deforestation on Zomba Mountain. One such scheme had a bloody way of coming out last year. On 23rd December 2020, a forestry guard shot dead an illegal soya in the mountain 
following a disagreement of the amount of a bribe. This incident was the highlight of our corruption which has been aided by the government through the emasculation of the Department of Forestry has helped to destroy the forest. Mamene baba ntembo pobwera nao kuchoka ku bench kumene ana muomberera munthu kuzafika malo ano angango kokoka ngata kokoka lodge ulogi kuzafika nayo pano. Awapo lisa nango zimangira chingwe mu jenimu ukukusa ndiku mangiriza ntembo kosiri ndikuka fika pa malunga ndi pano fagali moto nayi mapano ku atafika pano ndana kweza gali moto ku mapita. <laughs> On this day, five illegal soyas had gone up the forest reserve to do their work when three scouts found them. The illegal soyas did not expect them to come so soon. The terms and conditions of the deal are that once the illegal soyas pay a bribe, the scouts give them two or three weeks to do their work without interruption. But in this case, the guards had returned to demand that the bribe should be increased. The illegal soyas refused. In the disagreement, a fight erupted. The soyas overpowered one of the scouts. To protect his colleague, one of the scouts pulled the trigger on one of the soyas. The incident happened around 2 p.m. Police dragged the body out of the forest at around 8 p.m. Scouts we interviewed admitted that it is a thankless task for them policing the forest. And one of them, who was redeployed from the reserve on corruption suspicions, said both guards and managers alike have their own illegal deals that have helped to destroy the forest. Levson Kambale is also among those who believe that he and 16 others are victims of white-collar corrupt practices in the forestry department. In 1991, he acquired an individual license as a sawyer in the reserve. In 2007, he became bankrupt. In 2018, he found money and decided to go back into sawing business. However, the mode of timber business operation had changed. Forestry officials told him they were now giving timber harvesting licenses to a group. So, he teamed up with 16 others. He was chosen secretary of the group, which they called Jaguar Dam Cooperative, taking their name after a dam on the plateau. <laughs> they invested a total of 17 million kwacha, with each member of the cooperative contributing 1 million kwacha for the cause. These cooperatives are then considered for licensing when timber harvesting season opens. To the shock of Chagwadam cooperative members, they were never given a license when the season opened. Their efforts to get answers why they were left out fell on deaf ears. They were kicked about between Lidongwe and Zomba forestry officers until it dawned upon them. They had flashed 17 million kwacha down the waters of Chagwadam. To date, the members of the cooperative are very bitter people. My sister Vinay Jose, Tangungan drama, sorting out in the Banja too, and I told the Abaletu in house, who are very to Mavudi. I chance that who 
akulandi andrangu akucheka mataba panote una kumaliza mtengo pili ngono yao silite bali wachiwe tikuchita chicho sefe tukutika ndikumva kupote kwa mbili kuti sindi osanga aso ya mama ni pusa na school na kufika ndama mmasi bali wachiwe tikuchita ndeti aka na kauta tikomenya ntima kuti mwina wange ngoti ya tango cheka ni mitengo mena kanti fifite kaende ni mugule sia ulele the cooperative has since disintegrated. They have been trying to seek the help of lawyers, but the few members that are still around do not have money to hire lawyers. So, they are resigned to suffering. Kambari was born and has grown up in the community around the reserve on the Nankunda side. We asked him what he thinks is the root cause of the collapse of the reserve. He attributed it to corruption by forestry officers. Ah, kauli kauli zima tinga nyenzi for you to this it mitengo. Chifaja katangale. Ameti na uziko. Chifa ndo gwina chilo mpilimu. Ama fo ndo apasi kena ka cheka bwa uta gwire zimenzi cha. Kuma ineyo nabwa direct popanda ku zengwa nyenye pasi ndrama difazi kuti vuto. He added that communities around the mountain have been frustrated too at not being considered to benefit from the reserve in any way. There are no jobs for them. At the same time, they are hunted out, get arrested or killed for trying to earn a living in the reserve in vengeance. They set it on fire or go up in the reserve armed and determined to fight forestry officers who tries to push them out. In their various forms, these woes are at the heart of the destruction of forests in Malawi. And as the Zomba Forest Reserve falls, it is affecting other sectors of the Malawi economy. Tour guides told Times TV that they are registering a decline in tourists because the beauty of the mountain has been diminishing. This has resulted in a reduction of income for them and for beneficiaries in the supply chain. Zomba City too has been registering frequent flash floods which never occurred when the mountain had a good forest cover. But the biggest threat at the moment is on water supply in the city through Mulunguzi Dam. The dam is the biggest asset of the Southern Region Water Board. It supplies potable water to Zomba City and surrounding areas. However, there have been reports of the declining of water levels on the dam in recent years, a development attributed to deforestation in the reserve. Spokesperson of the board, Rita Makangwala, also told Times TV that deforestation is causing increasing siltation and infiltration of soil dust in the dam. This is increasing their budget needed in water treatment to reach the required standards of water portability. Deforestation across the country is affecting power generation at power stations on the Shiri River, accelerating climate change, degrading soil for agriculture, increasing flooding and damaging livelihoods. Minister of Forestry and Natural Resources, Nancy Tembo, agreed with our findings of corruption, underfunding and staffing problems as leading to deforestation in Malawi. She said she has already engaged with the Ministry of Finance on lifting the recruitment moratorium. Permission to recruit has been granted. She was optimistic that Malawi's forestry situation can be reversed as demonstrated by several community forestry management initiatives across the country. For the Zomba Forest Reserve, Government has already advertised for concessions for the management of 1,800 hectares for 60 years. And some cooperatives on the mountain are showing good promise. A 12-member Mulunguzi Timber Cooperative is one such initiative. Since 2014, it has planted nearly 200 hectares of pine trees in the outer slope of the reserve. The area is showing impressive work. The cooperative employs people to undertake various critical activities such as constructing firebreaks and keeping out invaders. But in a sign of kind of trouble, any other forest restoration initiative in the mountain might face. Their biggest challenges have emanated from the community. Edwin Chitimbe is vice chairperson of the cooperative. He explains. <laughs> Antu, I mean, Mungamoto, plus Antamina Matibera, 
Pen mafu tundi tu nangasi. Mitengo jando di sinakule. Komando kama jokan tau ni mugu magalola so mitengo icha. Ndeti makaa ndeti mau nonga ndrama so juhuga. Kuiga chite tezo. Kutu ya kasato chile moto kama so asati buli de mitengo icha. Ndenga ndeti mafu tu kambi ya mitu magu mana onda meni mo. Kuma kumbali aboma. Aye ya maisha sangu kuti tandiza. Ndeti magu yana onchi dogo nolimozi. Mitengo mene matu onjeza mene kaguti basa. But Chitimbe challenged that they have the capacity to manage a bigger hectare. That is why they have also applied for a concession. This year, they plan to put together 60 million kwaja which they can invest in forest management in the next 10 years. These efforts sound encouraging. Probably Malawi's forests can be served and restored. Yet it needs no question that the country's forests have suffered massive destruction such that it will take comprehensive and coordinated effort within the forestry sector itself and outside to restore them to the glorious state they were. That is the loudest whisper of all those that understand that for Malawi to achieve all its global and national development goals, we need our forests back.